Commodities. Added in Season 2 of Sea of Thieves along with the Fort of Fortune but far less popular, I'm here to show you how anyone can use these crates to turn an average treasure day into a gold bonanza. But first, we have to start our voyage waking up as always from the local tavern. I spawned in an ancient spire outpost, one of my personal favorites, and saw that there was a storage crate left out on the dock for me. Empty, but still useful considering that I was a broke pirate who was going to be spending the last of his coin gathering these commodities. For those unfamiliar with them, the premise is that pirates can fly a merchant emissary, grab these commodities at relatively cheap prices, and resell them to outposts who are in need of that particular item. For example, Ancient Spire had a surplus of ungraded tea. If I was intending on following the established trade route, I'd find out which outpost had a need for the tea and sell there. It's actually a pretty quiet way to make some easy gold without needing to PvP or even really PvE unless something spawns on you like a Meg or a skeleton ship. Not now, you guys. You're going to scare them away. The only thing is that we weren't going to follow the merchant trade routes. Instead, I had a different plan in mind. You see, commodities are like the trade goods from the Ashen Investing video on my channel. They can level up your Reaper Emissary just by turning them in. So by hitting up each of the outposts, you can purchase 15 commodities crates at each and then store them on your ship. Why store them? I'll come back to that. So, off we went to visit outposts one by one. From Plunder to New Golden Sands, Sanctuary to Daggertooth, we stocked up on commodities. In total, we were carrying 75 commodities crates and spent about 3,000 at each outpost. And I'm not kidding, I am a broke pirate. So broke, in fact, I was forced to purchase some gold via blue doubloons at Lorena just because I needed more crates and didn't want to sell any of the treasure I had scrounged up so far. Don't judge me. It took about an hour and a half to collect those crates, and the only reason it took so long was because at the same time of traveling from outpost to outpost, I was on the hunt for a harpoon rowboat. This is the only luck factor involved in this process. Rowboats are randomly generated on islands. You can't spawn one, let alone the version you want. And if you can, someone clue me in on that secret because I was having terrible luck on this search. Starting all the way back at Ancient Spire, I traveled island after island, spyglassing the beaches, looking for the harpoon rowboat of my dreams. A couple of times, the game would tease me, either with a regular rowboat like the one I found at Sailor's Bounty, or even a cannon rowboat at one point at Sharkfin Camp. I was getting desperate. It was time to offer up prayers to the rare gods and reaffirm my belief in the RNG. And I'm not saying that's going to work every time, but literally the very next island I approach, and there she is, in all her glory, my harpoon rowboat. Why did I spend all that time searching for a harpoon rowboat? Because in order to decrease the amount of time spent selling items at Reaper's Hideout, you're gonna want a harpoon rowboat. Don't ask me why the Servant of the Flame, with all the gold he apparently has, can't afford to build a harpoon station somewhere close by his tent like the Sovereigns have at each outpost. But that's a question for another time. It was time to harpoon the rest of the crates onto the rowboat, and man, can I just take a moment to thank Rare once again for the auto harpoon? It makes doing something like this so much faster than it was previously. Like, the game as a whole feels snappier just because of the auto harpoon. Plus, it makes such pretty artwork sometimes. Like, I almost don't want to sell this. Now, there was a Reaper on the map doing a Fort of Fortune, so turning in a Reaper's hideout was out of the question until that crew logged. So I made my way back to an outpost and picked up several of the lost shipment voyages from the merchant. They aren't too difficult to complete. They give the revered merchant manifest for a nice chunk of change and plenty of merchant crates that we can stack. What I didn't expect was that the mission was going to take us all the way into the Devil's Roar. Or that the game would think that now would be an appropriate time to spawn a skeleton ship. But this lets me point out another plus to commodities compared to the merchant trade goods I've showcased previously. They don't get damaged. No need to worry about plants drying out, cloth getting wet, or bottles breaking. Our commodities crates are rock solid by comparison. With the Reaper ship now turning in at the hideout, I was on the clock to get in and out with this sunken merchant ship. But I still did need those commendations, so of course I had to open up the captain's quarters and start looting all the crates. 
I've noticed that some pirates go back up for air when surfacing these crates and let me recommend against that, especially if you're playing solo. The quicker that you get in and out of that ship with the loot, the better. Instead, bring food with you, or in the worst case scenario, try looting a sunken barrel. Grabbing the manifest and dropping it on deck, it was time to harpoon the rest of the loot and get underway once again. The Reaper ship was still turning out of the hideout, so once again, I voted on another lost shipment voyage, figuring that it would take me at least in the general direction of the hideout anyway, and it did somewhat, with our final destination being Galleon's Grave. Before we could get there though, we had to deal with a Megalodon which had decided to come and play. In general, since the launch of Season 9, I have been encountering Megalodons at least twice a session, sometimes even three. Compared to the past half year, where I was lucky to get even a single Meg, this is great. Not great that it does take time away from the objective, but defeating Megs as a solo slooper isn't too difficult. Just make sure to try and avoid those bites, eh? We arrive near Galleon's Grave Outpost, and this is where I'd like to ask you all to pay very close attention. We head back down to the captain's quarters to start retrieving the loot, harpoon it, and the merchant manifest on board, and then go to take a look at the map table to determine our next destination. Did you catch it? No? Don't worry, I'll get there in just a minute. With the Reaper ship gone, I decided to make my way toward the hideout, but in my way was the skeleton fleet. I hadn't tried to do one solo yet with the changes made in Season 9, so I thought, why not give it a shot? And I'm glad I did, because the skeleton fleet has been nerfed tremendously compared to what it was like. Playing solo, I got just three ships, two sloops, and one galleon. I do believe the loot has decreased as well, but now I actually feel like the skelly fleet is not going to be a slog as a solo player. After the fleet was completed, I harpooned the last of the galleon's loot and wanted to start to move everything over to the rowboat for an easy reaper turn in. And that's when I saw it. Empty. The harpoon rowboat was empty. Not a single piece of loot that was on it was around. It had just despawned. I was dumbfounded. I didn't realize what had happened until editing this just now, but apparently there was a bug that occurred back at Galleon's grave. The loot was last there and then gone. Go back and check the video if you don't believe me. It wasn't stolen, just erased. All 75 commodities crates, gone. I was furious. But I had an adventure to finish. So what did I do? You're damn right. I collected those commodity crates again. Another round trip. Finally, we were at Reaper's Hideout for the turn-in. And yes, I used my cursed harpoon rowboat to bring us inside the Reaper's tent, blunder-bombed it to smithereens for costing me my time, and proceeded to sell to the Reaper. And just as I expected, Turning in the commodities first meant that we would be raising our Reaper Emissary right at the start, before turning in anything else, guaranteeing maximum profit. In the end, we made just over 300,000 gold. A very nice profit from just a bunch of commodities crates, wouldn't you say? And the best part is, is that it's up to you when you want to turn it all in. We want to loot stack the world event for hours? Have at it! You want to wait until gold rush? Go ahead! Unlike trade goods, there's no timetable to be held to or damage you need to worry about, so go have some fun silently reaping and earn those high gold payouts. Now, I feel like the game has it out for me today, but we ended up coming out on top, so I'm going to end it here before the rare gods smite me down. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and until the next adventure, this is John Bardcore signing out, saying so long and take care.